fun lecture, but I want you to know that I believe it could be the most important video you might ever watch. So please understand that this is only a small smattering of what I could have put into this lecture. I've actually tried to keep it as short as I could. There is something coming. This thing coming is not very pleasant and it is called the New World Order. One of the things that has impressed me the most about what I found was the fact that I was not the only one who believed that this conspiracy exists. This is a book entitled The Externalization of the Hierarchy written by Alice Bailey, a writer on occult meaning secret and hidden matters. She is a supporter of this conspiracy, one that I will be quoting quite frequently during this lecture, and this is how she sees how it has operated for centuries. The only thing that humanity needs today is the realization that there is a plan, which is definitely working out through all world happenings, and that all that has occurred in man's historical past and all that has happened lately is assuredly in line with that plan. This is Benjamin Krem, a believer in a new religion that is currently spreading all over the world called the New Age Religion. He is also speaking about the coming New World Order all over the world. And he is not in opposition to the New World Order, he is in support of it. This is a book that he has written called The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom. He wrote this on pages 28 and 29 of that book. In every age, teachers have come forth to enable mankind to take its next evolutionary step. They are the custodians of a plan for the evolution of humanity and the kingdoms of nature. This plan works out through the agency of this esoteric hierarchy of masters. By the way, the word esoteric means hidden or concealed, who substand all world events and constitute the invisible because unknown government of the planet. And on page 78 of his other book entitled Maitreya's Mission, he tells us that the personnel, masters and high initiates of the hierarchy have worked esoterically, once again meaning they work secretly, behind the scenes of our everyday life. The spiritual hierarchy has been in existence for about 17 million years. So this is why I am making this video. I want you, the viewer, to know that there is a conspiracy at work in the world that is planning our future and that that future is called the New World Order. It might be helpful at this point to use a simple illustration for those who do not believe in the conspiratorial view of history. I am reminded of the little boy who goes to sleep at night only to wake up during the night because the boogeyman is in the corner of his room. The little boy screams and his father comes into the bedroom and the father asks for an explanation and the little boy screams out that there is a giant boogeyman in the corner. The father looks and sees it but he decides that he does not want to alarm his son so he says that he cannot see it that his son is imagining things. The boy repeats his claim. And the father says to the boy, well, if you pull the covers up over your head, the boogeyman will go away. The boy does that and looks again. And now, because the covers are blocking his view of the room, he can no longer see the boogeyman. So after a short time, he pulls the covers down to look in the corner again, and the boogeyman is still there. This conspiracy is like the boogeyman. It hides in the corner and some people see it and are frightened. Some people see it and ignore it and others do not want to see it at all. But ignoring the conspiracy does not make it go away. Pulling your head under the covers does not make the conspiracy go away. The conspiracy is real and whether or not your father can see it and whether or not you pull the covers up over your head the conspiracy is still real and the conspiracy does not want any of us to see it and if we do to pull the covers up over our head 
But like the boogeyman, the conspiracy will not go away because we ignore it or cover it up. I intend on making this evidence that the conspiracy exists public so that the people of the world can prevent the future that the conspirators call the new world order from coming into existence. I would like to explain now that when I was teaching in a community college years ago in Portland, Oregon, I had a discussion with a liberal student of mine. He told me, you always find conspirators behind every bush. And I told him, that's because liberals are always putting bushes in front of conspirators. So today I'm going to remove some bushes from in front of some conspirators. The material I will be presenting on this video today is an expansion of the video I made in 1990 entitled The New World Order. And what I will be presenting today will be startling. And as far as I can tell, I am the only one who is in opposition saying these things. But I believe strongly that I am correct about the future plan of this conspiracy. Now I want to be honest with you and admit that this is a low budget operation. I do not have a large budget to spend on production costs, so I'm making this video with very little money. I am sorry that the quality of the video might not be the very best, but I am hoping that you are watching it because you want to learn about the New World Order and that the quality of the video will not be the motive for your watching. Some of these slides are a little crooked, and I'm sorry for that, but that was the fault of the company that developed the slides. I want to also let you know that the research for this video has been done by me personally from materials that any of you can easily obtain. I have no foundation supporting me, no intelligence network feeding me information, and no team of highly trained experts doing my research. I am solely responsible for what you will be seeing today. I also want you to know that the books that I have taken slides of are from my personal library and are somewhat scratched or worn. I'm using my own materials, my own library copies, to let you know that I have read the book that I will be quoting from. Each slide that you will be seeing during this lecture was personally taken by me, and they might be a little dark, or the lines might not be straight, or they might not be exactly centered. But once again, I am doing the very best to present materials to you, the viewer, and have saved money by doing as much of this work myself. And my purpose is to make the cost of this video as economical as I can. So I will be presenting my 30 years of research that there is a conspiracy active in America, and that it has been involved in our affairs for centuries, and that their ultimate goal is what they have chosen to call the New World Order. Let me end this part of the lecture by discussing a simple truth. This nation was created by amateurs, and it will be saved by amateurs. When Paul Revere rode down the street shouting that the British were coming to start the American Revolution, our patriotic founding fathers responded, by reaching for the old musket from off of the wall and going to the concrete bridge. Across the field came the English army, the best equipped, the best trained, the most prepared army in the world. The American patriot looked down the line at the others standing there, a bunch of farmers, shopkeepers, teachers, and others not prepared to defend freedom against the British. The Patriot looked at his old musket, bent and rusting, and realized he couldn't stand against the British. The odds were just too great. But he and the other amateurs stood. And because they stood, we have freedom in America today. This nation was founded by amateurs, and it will be saved by amateurs. So I'm asking that you understand that I, too, am an amateur patriot, and that this lecture is the best I can make with the limited time and money. So with that understanding, I would like to now start the lecture. I want you to know that those of us who believe in the conspiratorial view of history just got a new ally, someone that all of us know just told the world that I was right. And that ally that confirmed 30 years of my research in just a few minutes last year was President of the United States, Bill Clinton. This man just told you that there was a conspiracy in the world and that he supported it. 
Time magazine named Bill Clinton Man of the Year in 1992. By the way, notice the unusual way that the cover artist placed Clinton's head so that it looked like he had two horns growing out of the top of his head. Now, the letter M there in the back. I am sure that this was just a college prank that they were cleverly playing upon the President of the United States. But Time Magazine was wrong. If they had wanted to name Clinton the Man of the Year, they should have named the two men who made Clinton the President of the United States. Time was wrong. Clinton was not Man of the Year. These two men were. Most people would recognize John Kennedy as being the man on the left, but few in America will recognize the man on the right. First of all, I want to apologize to Time Magazine. I made that cover myself by taking a real cover, cutting out the main picture, and substituting the pictures of the two men shown in the cover. But I wanted to make a point. These are the two men that Bill Clinton acknowledged were responsible for his involvement in politics. As Bill Clinton ran for the presidency, his past was brought out so that all could examine it. It is known that he went to Boys Nation in Washington during the summer of 1963. That was between his junior and senior years of high school. It was during that summer that young Bill Clinton met the president. This is a picture of young Clinton on the left, shaking the hand of John Kennedy on the right. This picture had to be taken sometime before the summer of 1963 because President Kennedy was later assassinated in Dallas, Texas on November the 22nd, 1963. During the campaign, Mr. Clinton wrote a book with his vice presidential candidate, Al Gore. That book was called Putting People First. It contains the thoughts of the two candidates and was published in an attempt to get the reading public more familiar with their stands on the campaign issues. On page 217 of the book, Mr. Clinton has recorded a transcript of his acceptance speech that he gave on the night of July the 16th, 1992 to the American people from the podium of the Democratic Convention. This would be the largest audience Mr. Clinton would ever have at one time without a commercial break, and he told the American people more than they cared to know. The transcript of that speech continues on for several more pages, and on page 231 he is quoted as saying, As a teenager, I heard John Kennedy's summons to citizenship. So what he was saying was that he attributes his interest in politics to John Kennedy. He states that Kennedy gave him a call into politics. But the next sentence was where he told the American people more than they cared to know. Clinton said, and then as a student at Georgetown, uh, here by the way, he was acknowledging that he went to Georgetown University in 1964 after graduation from high school. Georgetown University is somewhere near Washington, D.C. Now going back to the quote, I heard that call clarified by a professor I had named Carol Quigley. So here he was identifying a professor he had at Georgetown named Carol Quigley who really clarified or brought his desire to get into politics into focus. During the time that Clinton was at Georgetown University, Carol Quigley, his favorite professor, was writing a book entitled Tragedy and Hope. This book was published in 1966, sometime during Clinton's sophomore and junior year in college, because it is known that Clinton graduated in 1968. This is what the book says about Dr. Quigley's background. Carol Quigley, professor of history at the Foreign Service School at Georgetown University, formerly taught at Princeton and at Harvard. He has done research in the archives of France, Italy, and England, and is the author of the widely praised Evolution of Civilizations. He is a frequent lecturer and consultant for public and semi-public agencies. So the American citizen can now know what Quigley taught Bill Clinton and why our president acknowledged the debt to him as being the clarifier of his political views. On page 950, page 950 of Quigley's book, he wrote the following, and what I would like to do is read the quote in its entirety and then go back and review what he had just read. Uh, Carol Quigley said, 
There does exist and has existed for a generation an international Anglophile network. Anglophile means basically based in England.